What's up you guys, Rex here. So that's a, another week of medical school in the books. And this week I learned about what might be a new organ. So this past week, we've been mostly covering the lungs and I have an exam tomorrow on the lungs, but we also did a little detour that we had a sort of just like seminar style discussion about three different recent scientific papers. And one of the papers was talking about a potentially new organ. So this article that I'm gonna talk about was published on June 21st, 2020, and it is titled The Tubarial Salivary Glands, a Potential New Organ at Risk for Radiotherapy. This paper is talking about what might be a previously undiscovered organ, and, and they think it's a new major salivary gland. So one of my goals every Sunday is to share something cool I learned in medical school in a very simple, easy to do way. And so this is my first time talking about a scientific paper, and hopefully I break it down very simply. So they initially discovered this organ using a type of PET CT scan. So CT is just computed tomography. So that's using a bunch of x-rays to take a bunch of slices and then computed. It uses a computer to put it back together and make really nice images that are actually just cross sections of the human body. And then PET stands for positron emission tomography. And that is where you have someone either get injected with or consume some sort of very slightly radioactive material that emits a positron that you have a detector can detect where it's coming from. And you take all of these different trajectories and you pinpoint where this positron emission site is, and that can actually light up like cancer or something like that. In this case, they used PSMA as a ligand to bind to what is emitting the, the positrons. And so PSMA stands for prostate specific membrane antigen. Now, it's a really terrible name because it is not totally prostate specific. So this study was in patients who had prostate cancer that were undergoing this specific type of imaging that you're able to image the prostate very well. But it happens that this there are receptors for this prostate specific membrane antigen also in all of the salivary glands. So you also get really nice images of where the salivary glands are. And these researchers are looking at these images and saying, oh yeah, there clearly are you know all the minor salivary glands throughout the head and stuff like that. And you can clearly see the major salivary glands, which are the parotid gland, the submandibular gland, and the sublingual gland, which I'll show somewhere on the screen of where those are located. And then I'll also show where they have, boom, this fourth area of clear something's going on there that they are calling the tubarial salivary glands. I don't really think I'm qualified to have an opinion on if it should be called an organ or not, that I don't really have a really decided opinion on the definition of an organ, but that generally you think of an organ as it has multiple different tissue types, so it's not just one singular type of tissue, and it all is sort of working together to have a primary function or functions. It might be encapsulated, it might not be, and, and so I, I don't really know how to, to have an opinion yet on if it's an organ or not, but it seems like it definitely is very similar to a sublingual salivary gland. So in addition to doing just imaging of, oh, here's, this is where it is, they also did a very small cadaver study. They just looked at two cadavers and they were able to dissect out of these cadavers where they think this tubarial gland is and take really thin slices of it and look at it under a microscope. And so that's histology is, is sort of the study of looking at things under a microscope and identifying tissues. And they were able to look at it and compare on a microscopic level that, oh, it looks very similar to a sublingual salivary gland. So that's good evidence that if the sublingual salivary gland is an organ, then this must be an organ too. And then in addition, they tried to show clinical relevance of it by potentially arguing that it should be classified as an organ at risk. And so specifically for radiation therapy or radiotherapy. And so that is where we now treat the cancer that someone has. This is now talking about like throat cancer or neck cancer, where we use radiation and, and sort of just destroy the cancer by shooting stuff at it. Um, and when we do that, we're careful that we have certain things that are classified as organs at risk. And so that are like the salivary glands because we don't want to destroy a patient's salivary glands because now they might have trouble swallowing, really dry mouth and stuff that is not ideal to live with. 
And so if we wanna minimize adverse effects as much as possible. And so they did a study looking back on a bunch of people that have undergone treatment for head and neck cancer and tried to correlate the likelihood of having adverse effects such as dry mouth to if they had radiation dosing to the area of the tubario glands. They didn't really get good data because basically there's huge correlation between the chance of getting radiation to the tubario glands to also some of the other um, major salivary glands. So you, they can't really pick out of the data if, oh, the cause of this was the radiation to this gland versus that gland. So really didn't have much conclusive results on it, but it is an interesting thing thing to think about that it might be identified later through further studies that, oh, this organ actually is really important because we've actually been ignoring it and just targeting it along with other structures in the back of the pharynx and saying, oh, that's not that important and letting all of the radiation pass through it on the way to the cancer site. And that is causing patients to have unnecessary dry mouth where we could maybe put the radiation through a different path and make sure we're sparing that organ. I don't know if that'll come to be true or not. It'll be really interesting to see. I'll stay tuned. Stay tuned if I uh, come across any other papers that have further developments in, in the saga of the new organ. But I kind of think it's just crazy that there is a chance at least that we have this huge knowledge of the human body. I'm going through and dissecting a cadaver right now and it feels like, oh, we know what everything is. And we were sort of talking about it with the professor who is also one of the people in charge of our dissection course and he helps me dissect. And it's interesting that he commented when we're dissecting that I'm very careful because I don't know what's important or not. And he's very confident in his dissection that there's a lot of things he's, oh, these are minor things, unimportant. And he cuts right through them and stuff like that. And that there might be many things that we sort of have accepted as this is unimportant, but might have functions we don't know. We're still learning about the human body. And so that's something to just, we have to stay humble that yes, we know a ton about the human body, but there might be major things we're still missing, such as a whole new organ. Now, I'm not saying this is for sure a new organ. It might be, who knows, but I'm curious to find out some more. If you have any comments on it, questions, or any concerns whatsoever, leave them in the comments down below. I'll read and respond to every single comment. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. If you wanna hear more of these cool things I'm learning in med school, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. And until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great. Thank you.